Hey Canucks fans, will the third time be the charm against the Toronto Maple Leafs tonight? I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take all in one take, it's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, February the 8th. This is really a Canucks insight that's positive and timely. I want to give a shout out to my Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sam Alexander, Just Incredible, and Canucks fan number 29. Thank you for your support and thanks to all members support. No matter what level, all of them are listed in the video description. And if you want to join the CCC crew, you can just press the join button underneath this video and learn all about the membership tiers there. I hope you had a good weekend. Speaking of the weekend and Super Bowl, see what I did there. Weekend was the halftime performer. Super Bowl, I was so surprised. I, I knew it was going to be close. I actually predicted a 31-20 score, but for Kansas City. So I got the 31 part right, but it was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who scored the 31 points in a, in a dominant 31-9 to win over the Kansas City Chiefs. Dominant. That's kind of how the Toronto Maple Leafs have been for the past two games, outscoring the Canucks 12-4 to in those two games. And now the Canucks have a chance to at least escape Toronto with one victory. And that would be, of course, playing tonight. Now, for today's game, I'm actually recording this very early on Monday morning because I'm off to Surrey for work for the entire day. And I probably won't get home until the third period, until six o'clock or so. So for my post-game live stream, I, I can't do it at seven or 7.15 because I wouldn't have really watched the game. I'm going to bump it to 10 o'clock tonight. So 10 o'clock tonight, back to my old time, my, my route, so to speak, going back in the day. And then we're going to go at 10 o'clock tonight. So hopefully you're still up or if you're not used to it. Maybe that's what we got to do. I, I've been doing these live streams right after the game at 7 p.m. Maybe we got to do a good old-fashioned 10 p.m. tonight. So that'll give me a chance to watch the game once I get home at around 6. I'll watch the third, and then I'll watch the first two periods, eat dinner, of course, and then uh, I hope that you join me at 10 p.m. Uh, for the live stream. Hopefully we're, we're talking about a Canucks win. And uh, So I'll talk about the, what I expect from the team, and then at the very end I want to tell, tell you about one new initiative, and you may have seen it on my channel already. Okay, so for tonight's game... A few questions. Obviously, I, I, you can only make so many of these qualitative videos that I'd be making, you know, whether it's gut check time or whether it's um, what's the identity of this team or whether it's revenge tour or all these things that all say the same thing. The Canucks need to play better. They know that. We've seen it. They talked about it in yesterday's press uh, media availability. They'll probably talk about it in their media availability today. That's at 9 a.m., you know, just after I post this because I'll already be in Surrey. For my work day they've been talking about it in all their post game interviews uh, they know that they can be better they know that they need to be better and as Travis Green said uh, he understands the frustration of the fan base and he says uh, you got to trust that no one's more frustrated than the players and I believe it I see it you see it in their body language the way they interact or don't interact with each other the way that Brayden Hopi is shooting daggers through his eyes at JT Miller, there are just a lot of signs right now that that uh, you know that they are not all one. They are not all on the same page. Now, would you say that's because of a lack of practice time? It's not an excuse. I think it's a valid reason. You look at the standings. The Canucks are the only team that have played 15 games already. No other team has played 15. No other team has played 14. Some have played 13, but the rest fall 12 and 11 games, some 10, even a few nine because of, of COVID uh, postponements and everything. So the Canucks have played more games than anyone in the league. Now, if the Canucks were playing well, it would look cool. You know, it would, it would kind of inflate their standing, their, their spot, their respective uh, position in the standings, if they had a high winning percentage. But it's actually the opposite right now. They are have probably the fourth or fifth worst winning percentage in the entire league. So it doesn't look good. They haven't moved anywhere in the standings. And they've played more games than anyone. But the true uh, uh, effect that has on the team is they haven't had any quality practice time at all. And that's what Travis Green talked about yesterday. He said, fine, and the players, uh, Pearson and Edler, talked about the fact that finally they needed this practice time. They needed to work on five on five. They needed to work on systems. They needed to work on communication. All those things that you'd expect and all the things that I talked about in my vlog from, uh, a couple, uh, from yesterday, actually about the identity of the team. Now, with that practice time, what's interesting is the Canucks, ever since the season started, way back on January 13th, so uh, what's that, 18 plus another, about 26, 27 days ago, the Canucks 
have not had more than a day break between games. So it's either they're playing back to back on consecutive nights or they're playing game break, game break. After tonight's game against Toronto, finally, the Canucks get their first two day gap between games. I wouldn't say it's a two day break because I'm sure they're gonna practice on at least one of those games, uh, one of those days, but two, their first two day gap between games in the entire season. That is crazy. That shows how much they've been running on fumes. That shows how tough it's been. Yes, they're professionals. Yes, they're not traveling as much, but that's gotta take uh, a toll on your body. That's gotta induce wear and tear in your body. So not an excuse, but I think it is a legitimate reason. But So it's a two day gap, like I said. So maybe slowly some other teams will start to catch up a little bit in the games played column. And then I believe the Canucks don't have another back-to-back for a good three, at least the end of this month, which is really good. So at least there's going to be one or two-day gaps now between games going forward. So like I said, it gives the Canucks more practice time, a bit more rest, and other teams will catch up in the games play column. For tonight, I don't know much about the lineup. I'm recording this before the media availability. I'm presuming to be Thatcher Demko and Nett. Both Demko nor Holtby had really good performances. So you probably go back to Demko, who has been the better goalie this season. What's really interesting to me is how much Jalen Chatfield has played and how much Ole Ulevi hasn't. Now, Chatfield has played the last, uh, well, he's played, uh, I'm just looking at it right now, he's played nine games. So after getting the lineup, he's played every game that he's been healthy for. And he started off really well. I'd say his first four or five games were really good. He looked solid. But the last four have been really bad. And now he's sitting at no points in nine games with a minus seven rating. And I know we can't read too much in the plus minus, but it is a stat that at least uh, provides a small indication of, of how you're doing. Just a small one, it's not the end all and be all. So again, nine games, no points, minus seven. Contrast that to Oli Ulevi, the other rookie who plays on the left side. Ulevi has only played in seven games, has a goal, remember that, that point shot, and he's a plus two. And he's a plus two. So think about that. Ulevi is a plus two, Chatfield is a minus seven. That's a difference, a net difference of nine and plus minus. Again, not the best stat, but it's certainly, it's still a stat. That's why they track it. So read into it what you will. I would love to see Yolevi get another shot. I don't know if he will. I, I don't know by the time you read this or watch this, if he's come off the taxi squad because there's three forwards that are healthy scratches for Tandon, Gaudet, McEwen. Yolevi went to the taxi squad because you only have three healthy scratches. And that's because Erickson and Bailey got in, who I'll talk to about in a sec. So... I would love to see you Levy come in and then you go you have to put Nate Schmidt back on the right side. So you could do something like Hughes and Ben. You could go Yo Levy with uh with Myers or Schmidt and the other one goes with Edler. In fact that Edler and Myers played together, maybe you go Yo Levy with Schmidt, Edler with Myers, Hughes and Ben. That's one way you could go. And we'll see if that indeed does happen. We talk about the forwards. Erickson gets into his first game, Bailey gets in their first game, and they barely play. Erickson plays nine minutes, uh, Bailey plays six and a half minutes. So between the two guys, 15 minutes combined between two guys, that's not gonna cut it. And both of them were, were very uh, invisible during their, during their first games of the season. So be interesting to see if both one or none of them play, if the two of the other three young guys get back in. We shall see. Unfortunately, I'll be off the grid for most of the day. So I'll return messages or tweets or comments when I can. Otherwise, I'll rush home, watch the third period. Then I have to do a ministry meeting on Facebook. And then I'll watch the game. And then I'll jump on to my live stream at 10 p.m. Lastly, you may have seen yesterday, I launched a new series on my channel called WWTT. What were they thinking? And it's meant to be um, a bit of a lighter series and looking at breaking down one clip, not a whole game, or not every highlight, but just one clip from one game. And uh, like I said, more of a, a good natured, lighthearted look at what the players were thinking at certain moments in time. Breaking it down, kind of like a John Boy type video, although I'm not as witty as him. I think I know more about hockey than John Boy, but that kind of style where I'm using, you know, uh, react, it's like a reaction video. I've done a lot of reaction videos in the past, you know, breaking down plays and things, got away from that a little bit, but I wanted to try it once again and just, just uh, maybe a way to cheer myself up and just do something a little lighter. So the commentary isn't that heavy. The analysis isn't that heavy, but I think I have a lot of fun and be able to show off a bit of my improv and speaking skills and my very limited sense of humor. So check it out. WWTT, what were they thinking? And my first vlog from yesterday that's done really well is actually the look 
that Braden Holtby shot JT Miller after Austin Matthews scored his second goal of the game on Saturday night. So check that out if you haven't watched it already. We'd love to get your feedback on that as well. Okay, there's a lot there. Question of the day, score prediction. What do you expect from the Canucks tonight and what lineup changes do you expect them to make? So enjoy the game. Leave a comment below. I will read, react, reply as always. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Join as a member if you like to. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great day. I will see you at 10 o'clock for my live stream. God bless. Enjoy the game and go Canucks go.